All right, so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and swap out the board and the PSAT, and we're gonna go ahead and swap it out for the thermocouple, as you see here, and we're gonna switch some cables. So everything you see on the table should be what came in the package. Um, the additional things you'll need is a 17 millimeter wrench. We'll need some of this thermal paste, a screwdriver, and something to clips the wires. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cover off the board, and then we're gonna snip these wires off here, and then we're gonna be removing these couple of connectors here, you'll see the trace back to this one, um, to replace the board with the new board that arrived here. And uh, I'll walk through it quickly. So first things first, just quickly unscrew, screws in the board. I think it's handiest to grab a cup or something to put all the pieces in that you're gonna be taking off so you don't lose anything. That screw off. Now what I would recommend is I recommend taking a quick picture with your cell phone of the board and all the wiring. So that way when you remove this, you will not um, remember how to put it back together just in case you forget which wire goes where. So as soon as this comes off, just go ahead and grab your cell phone and snap a quick picture of all the wiring here. All right, cool. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove these standoffs. This is what holds the board into the actual machine. And again, just drop all these pieces in some kind of catch cup so we don't lose anything. If you haven't swapped the board already, it's pretty simple. Um, you're gonna remove these pins. So first thing, first thing we're gonna do is remove this cable here. So you can leave the board Stand there if you'd like to, because this is the this is the cable that's going to be going to survive. And we're going to be doing a few things. So the first thing you want to do is take the same screwdriver and go ahead and unscrew this top screw here. This comes off. This will remove the cover from there. And obviously, uh, you can't work in the machine. Just I'm going to say it, but I mean, obviously you probably have to have done it already. Make sure the machine's in the off position and make sure it's unplugged from the wall. So I'm sure you've already done that, but if you have not done that, make sure the machine's off, and make sure it's unplugged the outlet from the wall. So when you're touching this kind of stuff, um, it gets a little dangerous. So once you do that, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to trace back the new cable here. So brown wire, as you can see, is going to the same red wire. So if you see here, this brown wire, if you trace it up from here, it goes up in here and through here, and it's connecting to this red wire on the side. This red wire goes over to the LED. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop these out first. These are the same ones you should have extras over here that are little zip ties. They just pop in there. So what you can do is you can just grab the back of something flat, push it out. Um, sometimes you might wanna grab something a little bit more pointy, push it out as well too, depending on what you wanna do. Um, but either way, these will be pushed out by the machine. So you can do that, both sides. And then this is all going to obviously be come out here. We're going to zip tie this back together when we're done. So as you can see, that pops right out. Some of these are more difficult than others sometimes to pop out, depending on how much stuff's connected to them on the back. And then you're going to grab this and also pull it, pull it out. So the top of this brown cable is going to run down here. We're going to take this cable off as well too, pull this off. And then we'll trace this back up Cut, cut this out from the zip ties, and then replace this top one as well too. So unplug this one, and again, trace it back through here. So these are all the cables that are currently plugged into the back of the side. And pull them out like so. And then this should, should be out too. So this is what you're looking at essentially. Then you have this brown cable that we're going to remove. Just trace that back to here. So you can see brown cable, brown cable, going back to same place there. And then we're gonna trace this part here. So now for this part, you're gonna grab a 17 millimeter wrench and obviously depending on what you're using, I would not recommend adjustable wrench, just having a standard wrench. And you're gonna see, you're gonna be able to get this in a certain way, right? So 
you, you, you're not gonna be able to get the wrench in in this position. So what you're gonna do is flip this around so you can find a, a place to get it in. Now, depending on where this, this nut's gonna be um, for the factory, you may have to do a different angle to get to it for the first turn. Um, maybe even like a 45 degree angle to get into here. So based on where it's at and the different positions you can go to as well too, um, you're gonna make a twist though. So you can see it, it, if it's difficult for you to untwist this, you can grab a small hammer, maybe like an engineering ha engineer's hammer and give it a, a little knock. But from this perspective, what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna twist this, this direction. So once you do the first couple twists here, you're gonna see it became loose. Just keep twisting this. And what you can do, and obviously make sure your machine's cooled, cool down, is you can start to unscrew this. And once this is unscrewed, now that we've disconnected all the other parts, you can just take this entire piece out. So um, we put this aside, we won't need this anymore. Um, this new thermocouple is going to replace that. So you can see there's so much more room in the machine now. So much more room to work. So that's why I recommend doing removing that first just so you have much more room to work. But you can replace the board first, whatever you're whatever's easiest for you. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the new board in place. So we're gonna use the same stand we took off. What we're gonna do is just put the board right back here again and just use it right here to put the same standoffs in. As you can see, just to hold it there so it's easier for us to work on. Based on what you're doing. Now, if you want, you can also replace the cables before putting the board back in as well, as well if that's easier for you. Um, I just think for myself personally, this is a little bit more simple. So we're gonna disconnect this bottom cable now that we have this board this way. And this is gonna go right back into that number two position here. So just remember where these are all at. And then the new cable we're gonna put in, that's gonna go back to this number one position because that was the one we, we just removed this rag. So that's gonna go right back in here. Make sure these are connected nice in there. This cable is going to trace back through. So when we remove these other cables in there, it'll all be routed, or you can just route it under here if that's easier, depending on what you want to do. And we're going to put this same cable right back to where the other one was removed from as well. So we're just tracing these back. That's going to go right to this point right here. Okay, so make sure that's on there. Good. And now we're going to trace this cable back up to where it was at. So if you remember correctly, it was going through here. Let's just put this right back to where it was at in there. And then we're going to connect it back to this same LED, same connector here. Just slide right back in. So just make sure you get it connected all the way in, like so. And that's going to tuck under here, these other cables, like so. And what you want to be careful of when you're doing all this is that you're going to see this, um, this pipe, which is connected to the actual um, the, the bar pressure gauge. So we'll be really careful with that because that's probably gonna be the weakest part of this machine is this area here. Um, not that anything's weak in here, but if you're gonna be careful of one thing, that's the thing to really make sure you're being careful of. So now this is back in, you can zip tie this if you'd like to back to this same um, area. I'm just gonna tuck mine back in there. And then if you want, you can use the new ones. I'm probably just gonna use the same ones actually. Just slide back in, just gonna push this back through like so. You can absolutely replace them with whatever makes sense for your machine. So the trick to this is just kind of get it lined up and from the back give it a nice solid push. Push them through, once they're both lined up, push them both through all the way. So you should see them protruding through there. There you go, it's all nice and clean now again. So now this red cable obviously will be coming through here. Uh, we snipped off this, this guy, so we'll go ahead and put that back on there. Um, and from there, you're just gonna trace back all the same wires. So for my machine, I have pink and black in the top position. So go ahead and pull this out. Now there's two ways you can remove these. You can pull them out. If they're having trouble being removed, you can also grab a small flat screwdriver. What you can do is you can push this in here and pop it out from the bottom, like so, as well. Um, but mine have all been removed pretty easily, so I don't need to do that. But if you're having trouble removing them, it's another option that you can go about as well too. 
And you see, we're gonna skip these now. We're gonna go down to the bottom, just like the other board was wired. So we're just copying the exact, exact wiring. And you get confused, look at the picture you took earlier. So that way you have a reference point of where, where these go. These unsnap with just push that in, back in there, push that in, back in there. Okay, now the old board is no longer needed too. So you can put that to the side, same place we put the P-step. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the new thermocouple wire. And this is gonna go into the temp two, um, sorry, the temp one position, which is right here. Um, right in that spot right there, this is temp one. And I said temp two on accident, but there's nothing to put in temp two right there because there's no pins. So just make sure you put in a temp one. And what you're gonna do is just slide in there like the rest of these. Then you can route these down. So the best way to do this is just kind of pull this up, tuck it back in, tuck these back in. Keep kind of close because this is where the cover is going to go back on eventually and you can route this down however you want with the rest of these wires so it's nice and clean i'm just going to put mine like this tuck it back as well and now we're going to keep it here to rest while we're getting the rest of these things prepped here so this is these are the mandatory tools that you need to remove everything there are some optional tools you can use as well so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put um this piece and a new nut on top of where we removed the old uh, piece at. So we're gonna go and just drop this in place. So just be careful, we put that in there. Make sure you don't um, have any issues. And then that goes straight in and now we're gonna replace this now. So obviously with the other one on there, you wouldn't be able to use any kind of socket wrench. But now that we have that piece removed, if you want, there's an optional optional tools you can use so you can grab a 17 millimeter soccer wrench and if you want you can have an extender bar you don't need to you can of course just use this again uh, but for ease if you have this you might as well just grab this connect it in and then as you go ahead and apply pressure here you can go ahead and tighten it now what you're looking for when you're tightening this back up is you want to give it pressure if you're knocking with a hammer you don't want to just bend it because you can accidentally kind of bend some of the boiler here so you want to knock it with a hammer to tighten it and when you're doing that, you don't want this to move any more than 10 degrees. So if you're looking at it, you knock it, it shouldn't move more than 10 degrees. So you can either use an engineering hammer or you can use a claw hammer like this. This is 28 ounces, which is way too much. Um, but whatever you have available, so you can knocks. And you don't want it to go more than about 10%. That's about where we're at right there. Should be good. And if you want, you can always just double check it with a wrench if you want to, to make sure that's where it wants to be too as well. Just give it a quick turn. And that's not turning any more than 10% or 10 degrees, I guess you could say as well too. Um, the other thing you can do too is because this back has 12 teeth versus the six, if you're having trouble positioning that, another trick you can do is use this because it's gonna give you more positioning as well and using the front of this as well. So a couple different options, whatever you have, whatever tools you have, um, use whatever is your, at your disposal. All right, and then now we're gonna do is take a little bit of thermal paste. What we're gonna do is apply it a little bit on here. And what we're doing is just making this, so when we put it into that stainless steel um, quarter there, it's gonna have nice um, thermal connectivity as we want. You don't need a ton here, so just put a little bit on. What you're gonna do is just grab your fingers and just kind of put it on there. So like this. Perfect. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna route this through here, to the machine, and you're gonna place it directly in. Now be careful, because this is a little bit sensitive, these wires. Go to place it directly in a place right there. So that's how it should look once you have that all done. So now all you're going to do is you're gonna give a few zip ties, and they're gonna zip tie everything back together. So um, once it's all zip tied back together then, you can go ahead and just take whatever zip ties you want to put them different places. So I'm just gonna put one zip tie right here. You don't need to use too many zip ties, but whatever you feel confident with to make it look nice and tidy. That's what we're going for here. So with all that being said, once you plug in your machine, you're gonna to to check for a few, few different things. Just wanna make sure one, that your uh, pressure gauge stops around the one bar range. And if you're looking at this beforehand, you may notice that 
the pressure on the gauge may go up a little bit or down a little bit depending on where it was at. So you should be right around that one bar range. So the first thing we turn it on, you're gonna wait, let it come up to temp, and then you're just gonna make sure that it is obviously going to be at the one bar range, and then just keep an eye on to make sure it doesn't go above that, that one bar range. Other than that, it's just gonna be reversing what we just did. So that should be everything you need.